Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, hello. Good morning. Can I hear you? Okay, very well. I'll be turning on my video shortly. Is Isaac around? Isaac is around, but he's not yet on the call. Okay, so Mr. Mr. Timothy will be doing a presentation before the Q&A begins. So you need to transfer host to him when he comes, when he, when the, the time is in, indicated. So about five to 10 minutes into the, into the conversation, let's say at 10, 10, you transfer host and you will just give a presentation about GIPC and the work that they do and whatnot. Are we on the same page? Yes, please. Okay, how are you feeling today? A bit better. Okay, feel better soon. Davidson, if you are at the office with Isaac, tell him to send me the questions on WhatsApp. My computer is not here, so I'm not able to make reference to it. Hello? Yes, champion. Yeah, Miss Fadila. Good morning. Good morning. Please send me the questions uh, from the Google Docs. Send it to me on the other WhatsApp. Okay, okay, all right, I'll do that. Have you sent him the email with the link? Yes, please, I've done that. I think okay. he's on the call. Yeah, he's on the call. Oh, okay, let me check in. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Timothy, can you hear us? Yeah, good morning. How are you doing today? Very fine, and yourself? Very well too. Great. Okay, so we will begin the call in about five minutes. Okay. I've already shared with my colleague that he will transfer hosts to you 10 minutes okay. into the call also, right. so that we can you can do the presentation before the Q&A begins. Okay. Where is the head of my tripod? Mr. Tim, are you comfortable turning on your video during the conversation? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Very well then.
Okay, we are on top of the hour. Mr. Emmanuel, can you confirm that you are recording and about to turn it live on Facebook so we can begin the session without further ado? Yes, the program is, uh, a recording is in motion and then we are live on Facebook also. Ah, okay, so we've been live on Facebook already. Yeah, since it's a live program, when they join, it's going to start from where they join in from. Okay, very well then. So let's begin the session. My talk is stupid. Somebody from Facebook sent a message saying my talk is skipping. Can someone check to confirm that you can hear loud and clear so we can begin the session right on top of the hour? Okay, good morning everybody and thank you very much for joining us on today's webinar series here at Finance Express Limited. My name is Fadila Ahmed and I will be your host for today's session along with my colleague Isaac who is on the background. Today we are talking about investing in Ghana. Discover the opportunities benefits, where to set up, and how to grow your business while in compliance with the Ghana Investment Promotion Council Act. On the call today with me is Mr. Timothy Wulanyo Inyanu, who is a Deputy Director for Investor Services at the GIPC. Mr. Timothy, thank you for joining us today. Kindly check to confirm your mic is working so we can start the session. Yeah, I think my mic is fine. Very well, thank you very much for joining in today. So Mr. Timothy, uh, today we are talking about investing in Ghana. This is part of a webinar series that we started earlier last month to highlight the different sectors, opportunities, benefits, and laws that exist or govern businesses to run properly here in Ghana. Ghana Investment Promotion Council, as we all know, it's the premier government institution in charge with promoting and facilitating foreign direct investment into the country. And we're happy to be speaking to you today. So this session is going to last for approximately two hours. Okay. We're going to begin the session by inviting you to share with us the work that you do at the GIPC in order to put the ball rolling for the audience to understand what the scope of work at the GIPC is. And then we will transition into the question and answer session where we have some specific questions that we would like to engage with you on. The audience are also going to be invited to drop in their questions in the comment section. And towards the end of the session, some of them can be invited to come on live to ask you questions directly and we will call it a day. Thank you for being here and the floor is yours. All right. Thank you very much, uh, and I hope you can see my slide. Yes, we can kindly proceed. Okay. A very Sunday's good morning to presentation. A very good morning to your audience, um, those on all of those online, and um, JPC is very glad to be part of this. Um, uh, webinar to educate um, our um, investors, uh, both uh, existing and potential ones about what GIPC does. And then um, also to take questions um, to address their um, need. So I would um, go through reasons why you have to invest in Ghana. Uh, briefly, and um, 
Ghana, we all know over the years have um, experienced successful change of hands of government. Um, that's it. Uh, and uh, Ghana has been ranked as the number one um, most peaceful country in West Africa and third on the continent. Uh, for ease of doing business, we have been ranked number three in um, West Africa in the ease of doing business um, 2020. And then one key thing that is that Ghana allows for uh, total uh, foreign owned um, investment. Favorable ge geographical location, Ghana is at the center of the world and therefore has uh, easy access to all the continents. We have uh, approximately eight, six to eight hours to Europe and then um, to the other um, continents, uh, 14 there about, depending on which flights you're using and the, the interconnections that you're going to do. Also, Ghana is, um, has a secretariat of AFTA uh, which makes um, Ghana a kind of commercial um, capital of um, Africa. This opens us up to um, 1.2 billion people, which is a, a good market for any investor that is um, looking at establishing in Ghana. Uh, uh, on the human capital aspect, we have an advantage of um, easily trained and easily trainable skilled uh, skill labor, which can always fit your, um, your uh, setup. And also these people are people who are able to learn very fast and um, be on the game once you, you give them a little push. Um, we have uh, diverse um, natural resources um, from gold, cocoa, um, diamond, bauxite, iron ore, and a, lot, a host lot, lot of them. All this opens us up to what we call opportunities for any investor that is looking at um, Ghana and the continent to, um, to take advantage of. Ghana is ranked as a number two um, producer of um, cocoa in 2020 with uh, about 880 tons of production. On trade, um, Ghana is a member of um, uh, WTO and has taken steps to um, set up a, a, an international airport that can accommodate any kind of aircraft similar with um, the um, seaport, which is Tema, one of the biggest in West Africa. And therefore, um, we have the logistics that is needed to connect you easily to any part of the world. And it's, we call it the home of many airlines as well. Um, enabling and then competitive business environment. By IMF, Ghana is uh, projected to be the fastest growing economy it, it is. It has been in 2019, and it's also projected to be the fastest in the sub-Saharan Africa. One of the key things that is driving that drove out today also is um, digitization of uh, the Ghanaian economy, making the business environment conducive. We have a paperless port, your um, revenue filings are online. Um, many of the um, stakeholders that you would engage with as a business um, are moving online, which makes um, life easier for you. You are able to even stay just in your, um, in your company and then do, transact business with these um, um, institutions wherever you are, even you can still be outside the country and do your filings and do your um, renewals and whatever, how to view uh, easily. We also have a, fint a strong fintech um, industry, which is uh, making uh, payments easy for many um, businesses. So you don't have to worry about the payment systems in the country. We have a very stable, um, Electricity supply for to industry, which also we know electricity supply to industry is one of the key things that um, any business will be looking at because without power, it will be difficult running many of your um, uh, 
the businesses that we you have. So uh, the government has taken steps to make sure that that is secured. A very strong and resilient economy, um, as I mentioned earlier, fastest um, in sub sub Saharan Africa for 2020, uh, with expected growth of 4.8 in this um, COVID period. Um, after COVID and the issues, um, some um, economies are still um, struggling to find their feet, but um, Ghana is expected to uh, grow at 4.8%. Uh, there have been various mechanisms um, during and after the COVID to uh, maintain sustainable growth um, in the economy. And the people of Ghana, very excellent people, great hospitality, um, and that has gotten Ghana ranked by CNN as the number seven places to go out of 21, and also ranked seven um, as the happiest country in Africa by the World Happiness Report 2021. Um, member of um, WTO, that also gives us a, a lot of access to um, there are over 164 countries um, marketplace, and um, it is important that uh, we note that uh, with your business in Ghana, you can reach all these markets without any um, cha challenges once you can satisfy the various uh, uh, requirements by the various countries. Uh, Ghana, as I mentioned also earlier, is uh, a member of the AFTA. And this gives us access to the whole of the Africa region, which is about um, um, 1.2 uh, billion people. This also, um, also gives us access to um, investors who can come in and set up in uh, Ghana here and launch to the various parts of Africa. What does GIPC do? GIPC has been mandated by the Act 865 to promote, facilitate, and attract investment into the Ghanaian economy. And when we say that this is not limited to foreigners, it's limited to every investor who wants to benefit um, and to serve the Ghanaian people. So what are we um, mandated to do? We are to give investment advisory services, which um, uh, covers uh, information that you need to set up the areas that you are looking at and what are the regulatory and uh, some compliance issues that you have to attend to. Um, during your business, um, during operating your business. We have a um, registration of technology transfer where um, a, a foreign company or a company outside of Ghana is providing some services to um, the local company or its subsidiary here. And therefore the, the subsidiary here will need to make some transfers to, um, to, pay for such services. It could be a franchise, it could be um, some technology or some uh, patented uh, use of uh, the outside companies. Uh, I think then you are able to easily re uh, pay, register and pay for such services that you are being granted. Joint venture facilitation. Um, there are companies that are looking both local and then um, foreign who are looking for a partnership in various areas. And therefore, you would have to indicate your areas to the um, center. The center would look at it, and then the matching would take place for those uh, foreign and then the local uh, partners. So uh, as a local partner, what you do is um, you register with GIPC, you indicate your interest um, as to what are the criteria of the partner you're looking at. And if there is uh, any investor who is looking for such um, uh, areas as well, then um, we connected two of um, you to dialogue and 
be, agree on whatever terms that you have. We would be part of the process throughout just to ensure that um, uh, both parties are safe. Negotiation of bilateral um, treaties, investment treaties with the various countries is something that we do in collaboration with a number of institutions, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, GRA and Ministry of Finance. Identification of specific projects for investment purposes. We have um, a system where we're able to um, move to the various parts of the country, talk to MDAs, regional coordinating councils to see what investment projects that they have available, which can um, investors can tap into. And then we profile those companies and then make uh, them available for anybody who is interested in making such um, investments. Um, it's, also a, it's also applicable to um, the central government's projects that are available for um, investment. Also, we um, grant uh, we grant uh, investment incentives, which may cover import duty exemptions um, in collaboration with the Ministry of Finance. We do the uh, initial uh, an arrangement and then um, recommend to Ministry of Finance for approval. And once that approval is done, you can just go and clear your goods without the import duty. And this, is, this applies especially to um, plant and machine, which I will talk about more. Uh, investment profiles for joint venture opportunities. And then we monitor and keep records of all um, enterprises in Ghana. As that has to do with uh, our um, ensuring that uh, companies are in compliance with uh, the act. And uh, this is the trend uh, for the investment over 2015 to 2020, um, last year we did um, 2.6 billion and um, charted that amount of um, projects value. And we are also looking at doing even more this year. Uh, as at half year already, we have um, hit about um, 880, almost 900 uh, million um, US dollars value of projects. So we maintain um, liaison between investors and um, government institutions, as well as other private uh, um, institutions uh, which are concerned or with uh, investment. So um, your FDA, that's a Food and Drugs Authority, um, your GRA issues, your um, local government issues, that's the challenges that you're having with these institutions. We are able to interface with them and um, try to understand the situation and get uh, help you in a way to uh, be able to overcome those challenges. Um, we assist assisting and invest and incoming investors. Uh, some companies are coming in and they want to um, meet some institutions. If you, are, you advise in time, we are able to arrange an itinerary for you, which uh, would uh, vis uh, visit those various institutions to enable you to gather the necessary um, information for your business decision, or investment decision making. And where permits are uh, required, we also help you to understand those processes. And maybe sometimes we have. Um, what we call the um, desk officers, um, not our staff per se, but um, we have uh, people who have been assigned to look at the issues of GIPC um, when there is a challenge as quickly as possible to enable investors have a, a smooth setup and operation in Ghana. We also assist um, companies to acquire uh, permits with a uh, with the immigration, we support them. After your uh, investment, we are able to support you to get those things done. And if you need any other, you have any other challenges, our aftercare division, service division is uh, available to understand the problem and uh, 
they are writing to the uh, appropriate um, quarters to enable resolution of the challenge. And these are the collaborating institutions. These are the institutions that we work with in the investment environment. There are many more, but these are the key ones. Um, Research Rounds Department, the Ghana Revenue Authority, uh, Bank of Ghana, Petroleum Commission on the regulatory side, uh, Ghana Free Zones Board, MMDAs, and all um, others, a host of others. But any other institution that is not uh, listed here and you want us to uh, help you to get to them, GIBC is able to easily do that for you. We say we have three uh, easy steps for you to get registered and begin your business. The first is to um, register with the registered grants department. This is where you um, set up your um, corporation in, gen uh, in general, um, the activity of the company, who are the shareholders, what you want to actually do, your directors, board of directors and secretary, you set up all those things. At the end of the day, you'll be issued with certificates of incorporation, you'll be issued with a um, constitution, and then you are good to go from 3A, which um, gives details on the various offices of the company and then the capitalization, you'll also be issued with that. Once you've done that, you would require you are required to um, show minimum equity contribution. And I'll go into detail in the next slide. And then after you have done that, you register with um, GIPC. And then you can go to your regulators if there is any for you to continue is doing business. Uh, also, the tax uh, authorities are there for you to register with. So what are the, what's the minimum uh, capital requirement? For minimum capital requirement, um, the law allows for 100% um, foreign participation uh, in the economy. However, um, joint ventures are also joint ventures are also encouraged. Um, so, in line with the GIPC acts, anybody who is coming in to do um, a JV or joint venture with a, a Ghanaian would have to show an evidence of 200,000 US dollars. And the Ghanaian partner must own a minimum of 10% of the total shares. Also, when you are doing wholly, we are going to own the um, company wholly by a foreigner. That foreigner must show a minimum of 500,000 US dollars into the country. And then if you are into trading, the trading irrespective of your um, irrespective of your shareholding, the law requires that you show an evidence of 1 million US dollars and also employed, employ um, 20 Ghanaians. Key exemptions from this um, minimum requirements are the investment portfolio for you. If you are doing an investment on the stock market, that one you don't um, show any investments. Uh, that one you don't even have to register with GIPC. Sorry, if you are doing, as a company you are doing into um, on the stock market, there's a company which you are you have invested in in Ghana here would have to register with GIPC. And so that one is more something that is um, out of your as an individual if yeah, that is the case. And then manufacturing and export trade, companies are set up to manufacture and export trade is companies that are in Ghana to um, pull together various um, products that are available in Ghana for export, for, for, um, exporting to other markets. They are also not required to show any minimum um, foreign equity. If you are a foreign spouse in Ghana, you register with GIPC, but you don't show a minimum uh, equity. And this foreign spouse, that is uh, uh, somebody who, as a Ghanaian, has married uh, a Ghanaian has married a foreigner, and the foreigner comes in to stay in the country for a minimum of uh, 
five years and wants to do something in Ghana, um, the law exempts that person from showing um, the minimum equity requirement in that regard. And um, for our brothers and sisters who travel to other countries and by that, and by some nature have um, lost their citizenship, when they are coming back, the law grants them uh, immunity when it comes to the show of evidence. But before this act, we were. Um, so how do we show this um, investment? Um, we have two ways. We have uh, in cash and in kind. In cash, you'll be required to um, open a corporate account with any of the commercial banks, local currency, foreign currency, and transfer or wire the money from outside the country into that account, instruct your bankers to confirm, convert and confirm to Bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana will confirm directly to Ghana Investment Promotion Center and um, copy you on the same letter. So once you have those uh, letter or we have that letter, you are good to go with a confirmation. The only thing is to, for you to um, complete our forms and then submit them for review. And then we go on with the process. In kind, maybe you are bringing in um, machinery and other stuff, planted machinery for your activity. What you are required to do is to clear from the pot and after clearance, submit the original copies of the clearance and shipping documents to GIPC. And then you are good to go with the completion of the form and all that stuff. Specific opportunities and the priority sectors infrastructure and the details are there. Um, Agro-processing, intention is to add as much possible um, value to all our produ uh, products uh, and cultural produce in Ghana. We have tourism, ecotourism, hospitality centers, hotels, theme parks, etc. And then manufacturing 1G1 Earth, Ghana. The government is looking at um, industrializing, and then the way to go is to um, let this uh, industries centered around the various products that we have around in the country. And that is why the 1G1F and great support for them so far. And then pharmaceutical, textiles, cocoa processing um, as uh, the second largest producer of cocoa. Uh, Guyana is looking at adding more value to uh, this uh, cocoa beans instead of, instead of um, the raw beans export. And we have been seeing an increase in that. Um, general benefits and uh, general incentives. We have the law which guarantees um, you against uh, expropriation of your business. We know in the past that um, Ghana had some of those challenges where private investments were nationalized. Uh, this act protects you from that specifically and also the um, constitution of Ghana France against that. If the case be that Ghana would have to do that for national and national security and national interest, they are supposed to, the government is supposed to pay the necessary compensation for uh, this investment. We have plant machinery equipment, custom duty exemption, um, machineries that are being invited, uh, are being imported for your specific company activity. Uh, can enjoy exemption on the import duty. That has to, uh, you have to be registered first before you can enjoy all these benefits. So once you do it, then you apply on the uh, ICOMS, um, we're able to review and uh, give your feedback. Once uh, it's fine, we recommend to Ministry of Finance for approval, final approval. You are able to um, expatriate your dividend and net profit after the necessary payment of taxes. Uh, you can easily transfer your funds out uh, in respect of servicing your foreign loans. Transfer of funds after liquidation, all this is available. 
uh, we know investors would want to always have a trusted person or a trusted eye to manage their businesses or to do it themselves. And so therefore we have the automatic quota arrangement for companies to take advantage of. We have time bound um, work permits in case that you have exhausted your automatic. The automatic is four of them. And then you can apply for time bound work permits, which we will support gladly. And once we see the justification for it. Um, carry over losses apply to following business. Those in specialized areas are five years and other areas, three years. So in case you set up business and it's not profitable from the start, you have five and three years respectively, depending on the sector you find yourself in. We also have what we call the locational incentives for manufacturing company. Companies which are um, registered and are in a crime tema have um, have a tax, corporate tax rate of 25%. Um, however, if you are outside a crime tema in the regional capitals, coming in the regional capitals, you enjoy a rebate of 25%. So instead of 25 rates, percent rates are in the corporate tax, you'll be paying effectively about 18.75%. And uh, when you are outside the regional capitals, you enjoy um, you enjoy one of fifty percent. So effectively, you'll be paying um, you'll be paying twelve point five percent. That is for manufacturing companies. Also, um, we have what we call the strategic investment um, incentives, which the law states and requires and say that if uh, an investment, which is in the priority sector of the government is, um, is looking for incentive to set up, we, that company can easily negotiate um, its benefits with the, the government. And so that covers the custom duty um, and other stuff on your plant machinery and then sometimes construction materials. So we have seen a number of companies, but in this case, you have to have a minimum, the minimum investment required is 50 million US dollars, 50 million US dollars for such, um, and the company has to be, the activity has to be employment generating, support um, social economic development, as well in the strategic sector of the government. We have locational incentives for also agro-processing companies, which is the first five years is um, tax holidays. But in case you make a profit within those times, you are required, you'll be required to pay 1% of that, those profits. And if you are located in Accra, you have 20%, 15% for regional capitals. Outside regional capitals, you have 10%. And in the three, the five northern region, region regions of uh, northern regions of the country, you have um, 5%. So I think that brings me to um, the end of my presentation and um, I would um, defer the uh, lesson to Fadila to take it from there and um, where we have questions, um, we can uh, respond to those. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Timothy. That was a very elaborate presentation and has covered some of the questions that we already have. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a better insight into the work that the GIPC does. Now, what would you say is the practical profile of an investor that should reach out to the GIPC when he or she wants to start a company or expand an existing company into the market? Okay, um, profile, I'm not so sure, but um, any company that, um, or any investor that is looking at um, doing business in Ghana um, can always talk to GIPC for um, any guidance that uh, the company may need for that in that regard. So we welcome all kinds of um, investors into the country. Okay, thank you very much for sharing. So in this regard, uh, what would you say 
people who are non resident so let's talk about for starter investors, people who are non resident in the country, what routes possibly exist for them to invest into the Ghana economy based on the work that you do and the experience that you have? Okay, non residents in the country, the act um, requires that um, such companies um, would have to show um, investment value as I indicated. Mm -hmm. um, but let me note quickly that um, this um, act is under review and also looking at um, what is ha happening on the, in the ECOWAS market and the continent as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. We also understand that um, we have um, this after agreement that mm -hmm. uh, we have to work with. So we are reviewing the law in the light of all these things. Um, so okay. in a few years, to, uh, on the next few years, we would see a, a very different um, law which um, sort of appreciates all these things. Uh, but at the moment, I must confess that um, the, the current law we're using is just saying non ghanaian and for that matter, whether the president is an equal citizen, African citizen, would have to satisfy the uh, minimum requirements as it is. But going forward, we, we hope to um, have a, a very um, attractive uh, distance for all these companies and individuals and companies who want to invest in Ghana. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think that is very uh, needful. And that was one of the questions that we have in relation to ECOWAS nationals and other African nationals. How is the GIPC and the investment law going to cover or uh, provide any form of differentiating factor in relation to the capital requirement that they need to meet and uh, other requirements that is uh, currently required of all non ghanaian investors? Okay. Uh, what would you say, so what type of businesses are required to register with the GIPC? Is it only limited liability companies and joint ventures? Kindly give us more light in relation to that so that uh, people are well guided to that regard. Okay, um, any company that is a profit making organization should be registered okay. with GIPC. So um, um, register with GIPC, but with a foreign participation if uh, the person that is a foreign participation is mandatory. Mm -hmm. However, um, local businesses too can register with um, GIPC in order to, to, to take advantage of some benefits that is under the, the act. So that is what I would say in that regard. So for all companies that has foreign participation is mandatory. Mm -hmm. And foreign participation in this regard per the current law is that they have some shareholding in the company. So it can either be um, a joint venture with a Ghanaian or wholly foreign one. Once there is uh, some participation in the equity of the company, that company mm -hmm. would have to be registered with GIPC. Okay, uh, so again, only profit-making organizations with foreign participation, either shareholding or fully owned foreign companies. So just to reiterate on the capital requirement uh, in relation to services, if it's fully foreign, it's 500,000 US dollars. And if yes. it's uh, with foreign participation of at least 10%, it's 200,000 US dollars. Okay. Uh, yeah, let, let me, let me yes. add that with a joint venture, um, the Ghanaian must necessarily hold 10% of the equity Capital. or yeah. total shares in the company. So it's not just any, um, um, you know, we, we, we had um, um, those challenges before where Ghanaians are given only 1%, sometimes maybe 2% just for, for them to be able to, but uh, the current law that we're using emphasizes 10% minimum. Minimum shareholding. Yes. Thank you for for, for sharing that. So let's talk about the preferred sectors that you mentioned. Uh, does the, is there a difference of, uh, a different set of requirements for companies that choose to invest in the preferred sectors that you have mentioned, like the agro processing and other types of sectors that you have highlighted? Um, those are um, priority or key sectors that the government is looking at at the uh -huh. moment to um, 
be able to um, add value to the uh, the products products that we have in the country or that has uh, the resources that we have in the country. Mm-hmm. And also um, to add to that, um, the industrialization agenda requires these areas of um, uh, these areas of sectors to be able to achieve that. What I will say is that in relation to the agro-processing and the manufacturing, we know of the uh, most name the 1D one of that's one district, a, one. one district one factory, um, which um, the government has um, hugely support for them to be able to take off with various um, incentives, including um, uh, import duty exemption on their plant and machinery, as well as their um, uh, inputs for manufacturing. Uh, also, somehow uh, they have a corporate tax um, holidays um, ranging from uh, for various depending on your. Uh, business plan and projections that you have you have made. So I would say those um, have uh, some special incentives in that regard. That is, but you have to be um, you have to apply under that, those uh, regimes to be able to enjoy the, the benefits of the one D one F, especially. However, under the GIPC still, we are able to support you for your plant and machinery for your production purposes. Okay. Uh, duly noted. So the requirements still exist in terms of the capital requirement they need to meet, except for the for the four types of businesses or people that you mentioned earlier. Uh, however, they will, on a case by case, be be have have the opportunity to negotiate additional benefits or incentives to compensate for their investments. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, that has to do the strategic investors. Mm-hmm. That has to do with um, companies whose investment are above or has a minimum investment of 50 million in capex. 50 million. 50 million. Five zero million in 50. capex. Okay. Okay. They are able to negotiate additional incentives. Okay. Okay. Duly noted. Now let's talk about the practical implication for existing companies in Ghana. What are some of the uh, changes that may require them to register with the GIPC. What are some of the changes that could happen within a company that a company that was previously not registered will now be required to register with the GIPC and meet the capital requirement? Okay, first of all, our assumption is that once the company is, has a foreign participation, our expectation is that that company would have been registered or would have contacted GIPC and registered with it appropriately. Mm-hmm. If that is not done and uh, our monitoring people, our monitoring uh, department mm-hmm. gets into the ground and sees, then um, legal action could easily be taken against that company. And okay. also, it, uh, um, but for, let me say, for Ghanaian owned companies that are operating, mm-hmm. and therefore, and then they are looking at um, foreign investment, and that has to change their shareholding structure. Structure. Once the shareholding structure is changed, mm-hmm. um, which has a foreign participation, that company would have to take steps to immediately register with GIPC. To, to register with GIPC. However, if the, however, if the company is already registered with GIPC, then there might not be much need in that regard. However, if there is a change in your objects, that's the activity that you are you registered to yes. do, you would have mm-hmm. to talk to GIPC to understand if there is any further requirement that you have to meet. That for you example, have to meet. yeah, for example, a company which is into services, mm-hmm. a wholly foreign owned, um, maybe has decided to do um, supply of goods mm-hmm. or general trading, as we may say that company would immediately have to take steps to ensure that it's compliant with the GIPC Act by showing the additional equities to move its equity to the minimum of uh, 1 million as required by the law. Yeah. Um, however, we have also, we also do what we call, um, companies are also expected under the law to renew their registrations every two years. This is to enable us to update um, data 
on the companies with us and also ensure that the companies are into the specific things that they have um, registered. decided to be yeah, registered right. to do. Um, we encourage companies to inform us, GIPC, at any point in time that there are changes in the shareholding, in your object, in your director's secretary, your location or activity, you should let us know um, that you have made these changes in your company. That is, that is to help us to um, update our records and whenever there is an opportunity for GIPC to invite you for any um, programs and all those stuff, we have the right information to be able right. to always contact you. Sometimes companies register and you try to make contact with them and it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, so we would always encourage companies to always keep up to date with the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. Very uh, needful advice. I think this is uh, an area of compliance that many companies need to adhere to. Now, let's talk about Ghanaian-owned companies. How can a Ghanaian-owned service or trading firm benefit or work with the GIPC in the promotion of its activities or support of the investment promotion activities that you do? Okay, um, Ghanaian owned companies uh, also enjoy almost the same benefits. Let me say, or enjoy the same benefits as any foreign or joint venture registered companies once you are registered with the center. So, if it's a skill that a skill set that the company needs that he cannot find in Ghana, that company is uh, allowed to apply for support from GIPC in order to be able to employ that foreigner that would help them to achieve their. Uh, company uh, objectives and uh, vision in general. Also, um, if you are into production or use of um, heavy machines and equipment, um, GIPC is able to support your imports with, um, with a um, exemption from import duty um, payment in order to clear your business, uh, in order to clear your machines and plants. So I think the most important for us, or the most important thing I would advise all Ghanaian, Ghanaian owned companies is as much as possible, let's engage with the various um, ministries, departments and agencies who are in your line of business or who are in one way or the other caters for your business or has something to do with your business have a chat with them, where can, uh, some are, what are some of the benefits I can get or what are some of the opportunities there for me to, to, to be able to take advantage, uh, uh, easily take advantage. So that there are various uh, advisory services with these various, um, what's the name, institutions who will be able to guide you in leveraging and even increasing your reach in, in the economy. So please, let's um, engage with the, uh, um, appropriate government institutions in order to make this things happen. Oh, absolutely. I, 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 I will definitely recommend that because uh, it is a lot of companies complain or startups complain about lack of government support, uh, but it's not necessarily uh, lack of government support. It's lack of either the knowledge of the government support that exists or engagement with the various programs. Now, I would like to know if there are any specific pro programs or uh, process of matchmaking foreign investors with local companies. And if so, what do the uh, local companies need to do in order for their companies to be profiled for those matchmaking opportunities or funding? Okay. Um, you agree with me that um, any company that would want to go into some kind of measure, some kind of kind of a, um, joint venture would always want us to be clear as to what is in the other partner. Yeah. And therefore, it is important that um, our companies um, or whichever company it is has its books in order. Absolutely. Um, because that is one of the basic um, what's the name, requirements that requirement. uh, any company wants to um, look at. And then where are you going? 
uh, what are your needs? What are the criteria that you want to see in your incoming partner? Those things have to be very clear. So for Absolutely. a wholly Ghanaian owned company, for example, what you do is um, once you have those things clear, you can register with GIPC and inform the GIPC appropriately that, okay, I'm looking at these areas for joint or for matchmaking or for joint venture purposes. Um, let me know whenever there's somebody. Else. So we have a, a business development, uh, development team which can visit your projects and just ascertain certain files that you have provided and ensure that things are fine before we list you up for uh, any matchmaking uh, um, engagements. So that is what I would say. So I would I want to encourage all businesses in the country to take or to ensure that they have uh, the right structure when it comes to corporate governance, because that also helps you to leverage on a lot of stuff if you have. So that is what I would say. I absolutely agree with you to that regard. And in terms of compliance services for foreign companies that will watch this later or are currently available, you need to get your books in order. And we currently provide accounting and compliance consultant services. So you can get in touch with us if you are having any uh, or need any of these uh, accounting or tax and other regulatory compliance services to get your books in order. Okay, now let's move to uh, existing engagements that the GIPC has uh, you know, with existing companies. Can you give us a practical example of some of the support programs and initiatives that the center has to support existing businesses that are registered with uh, the GIPC and local companies that exist? Okay. Um... GIPC's role, one key role and mandate that the Act gives us is to ensure that the business environment is conducive for business. And for that matter, we work a lot of, a lot of time behind the scenes to ensure that some of these things uh, are achieved. We dialogue with uh, our sister, sister agencies that have listed, or other government institutions um, that I've listed earlier in my presentation um, so that we see how best can we make things easier for um, investors who are in the economy. Um, so we have, we have several of these, uh, we call it stakeholder engagements to discuss the challenges that um, investors are having and also to see how best we can make things a bit smoother on our part. And the other thing is that we have, as a center, we have what we call the monitoring and then aftercare services uh, divisions. This uh, monitoring, even though they, they, some, they check on um, compliance, they are also very friendly people who um, seek in the interest of the businesses. And therefore, um, when they are on the field, they are not only looking at compliance, 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 but they look at, they engage with the companies to see whatever challenges the companies are experiencing. And that, um, those challenges are cataloged for the aftercare service division. And aftercare services takes those uh, issues up one by one and delve into them and ensure that they are um, brought to so, a conclusion or to a resolution at all point in time. So we have challenges where some companies have issue with their uh, the stability of their um, power in the area which was affecting their businesses. So we went in with the electricity company of Ghana, had a discussion, they had a table, a round table discussion and those things were resolved. So there are a number of uh, issues that come up. Sometimes it's um, partners who are having challenges. And so that is also um, mediated through those um, uh, challenges or time to, for them to get better understanding and work together if there's a need. So um, I would say it's case on case basis and uh, um, your unique your problem will be unique and therefore whatever challenge that you have, Absolutely. you engage the um, Ghana Investment Promotion Center and um, our respective divisions um, which, who are in charge of those things would um, um, assist you in finding a solution to those problems. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, at the end of this session, I would ask that we share with the public how they can contact the center directly. Okay. Uh, I would want to move to, I would say the future of work or the future of investment, immigration and other related questions. So I'm curious to know some of the, pro, some of the policy changes that we should expect to see in relation to attracting investment from the ECOWAS nationals and members of the AFTA and what practical changes are we going to see or should we expect to see in relation to the acts and investment requirements? Okay, um, I, I think I mentioned something earlier regarding um, the JPC's um, act going through a review at the moment. And even though we want it as fast as possible, we are also cognizant of the fact that the after investment environment or investment code in general is also in the process. So it's going to a lot of time, it's going to hinge on that as much as possible so that we are in, um, let me say, we are in compliance with the after protocols as well. So that is what, so, but uh, from off the top of my head, I think one key thing is the uh, minimum foreign equity requirements, okay. which will be looked at definitely and how we go forward in that. So uh, there's going to be uh, um, a change in those areas and generally how um, there's, uh, various institutions are set up to support uh, this uh, uh, the businesses of uh, our investors. Yeah. Okay. I believe that will also uh, address the issue of retail trading among our uh, ECOWAS nationals in Ghana and uh, what the requirement would be for retail trading participation in the local Ghana economy. Yeah, we need to address um, many issues as much as possible. So um, let's. Um, um, have a patient, the patience a little bit to um, get to that route because once after is there, a lot of things are going to change us from the normal business we do now. So I think the encouragement to our uh, investors is that they should just uh, prepare themselves to take advantage of the after um, agenda to reach out to all parts of Africa. Okay. Now let's move to remote work, digital nomads and residency issues. Are there any programs in the pipeline that seeks to attract uh, remote workers and online entrepreneurs to either set up their business locally here in Ghana or be able to be resident in the country uh, in a more, I would say, uh, flexible and progressive manner? Okay. Um, I think one key thing we have to take note of is that um, any um, business or any investor who wants to um, transact business in any business environment would have to follow some rules and regulations as it may be. So if a, a company is interested in setting or an investor is interested in setting up in Ghana, the rules are there for the person to follow through and then that whether to stay in the country or not, that I think is more of the decision of the, the investor. Some people want to be there, others will want to um, have a trusted person or a trusted eye to watch over those um, their investment for them. So I think Ghana, um, Ghana Investment Promotion is set up to support whichever way you want to go. Whether you want to come yourself or you want to be remotely managing your business, I think that is fine with GIPC. But I think the, we must see you as being a good citizen, um, as in uh, paying your taxes and all the other um, uh, regulatory requirements that are needful of uh, uh, name, uh, any company to satisfy. I think once you are performing your duties properly, that is fine with us. Okay. Uh, I am curious to know if there are any uh, plans to institute digital nomads or remote work visas that allow people who already have companies in other locations to be legally resident in Ghana for an extended period of time, could be one year, two years, just like the way we see in Antigua and Bebuda, uh, Dominican Republic, Croatia, and the likes of it. Okay. Um, 
I think um, the, the, the laws are what would enable us to have some of those things. And as I mentioned, there are still engagement with the various um, institution as well as the World Bank, the private sector to um, put out um, a good law for the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian investment environment. And therefore, those details, I think we can consider them and see if it's feasible for our environment, why not? We would go for it because yes, a lot of businesses can thrive without the investors actually being um, resident, but the companies would have to be resident in the country. So in that case, yes, there's that possibility. So discussions will be had on that and then uh, we can go forward. So the new law should have a direction in that regard. Okay. Uh, I would be curious to also know if there are any practical ways in which citizens can participate in this policy making initiatives or consortiums that may exist in reviewing these laws. Because a lot of, uh, I would say, people uh, are not clear on what is the policy, how can they engage in the policy creation or influences some of the policies that should be instituted to govern investment and doing business in Ghana. Let's move on. Yes. Yeah, we have various um, stakeholders. Um, so we try to work through all the stakeholders and as much as possible, I think as an institution um, yourselves, you can as well write officially to GIPC on maybe some of the changes that you are looking at or you would want the, the center to consider in um, what's name in the new GIPC Act or the Investment Environment Act and all this stuff. I think you can easily write to uh, um, the center to consider those things and then they would, there will be that consideration. However, we, we have engagement with uh, the, the regulatory organizations, um, private sector groups, AGI, Chamber of Commerce, PEF, and um, what's the name, the Institute of Accountancy and all banking sector. All these people are involved in um, in the review process, and therefore, at the end of the day, we okay. and the bill is also usually advertised on the parliamentary uh, website for inputs and all those stuff before the final. Um, it goes to the final process. Thank you. It's been passed, so you can always take advantage as we are still in the process to communicate to uh, the center officially as to. What are the things that you want the, the center to look at in the development of the new art? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, would, would you say that there is a pipeline implementation or plan to implement citizenship by investment programs in Ghana? Not so clear about the question. Is the center together with immigration considering instituting the citizenship by investment program in Ghana? Um, that's one I I wouldn't say we have had any engagement in that regard, but I, I know that um, if you are looking at citizenship, you can as well um, contact, um, what's the name? Uh, Ministry of Interior. And immigration. It's Ministry of Interior and Immigration, which uh, immigration and the Ministry of Interior, you can start from anywhere. And they would, there are um, various criteria that they, they look at in granting that citizenship. So if you are satisfied, it's, it's, it's a preserve of the Ministry of Interior to issue that. So for now, we have not um, started an engagement yet, but I think it's a good thing we have, we have mentioned. Um, so possibly I would uh, relay with our um, legal department to to let them um, cut it if it's, it's possible to be done. Okay. Uh, at this point in time, I would like to switch to diaspora engagement. What are some practical uh, programs that exist currently in engaging the diaspora, members of the diaspora, uh, in diaspora Africans or African diasporas overseas to invest in Ghana? And are there any changes that we should expect in that regard? Okay, so the diaspora um, engagements, I think even as we speak, we have a, I mean, uh, uh, I think in Kingdom, 
upcoming some pieces that need to be done. Yeah. So um, government is looking at um, generally um, leveraging on the expertise and the, uh, skills, technical and whatever it is uh, of our own um, people who have originated from Ghana or else uh, any part of the African region to to help build the economy. Um, so there's that engagement um, going on from time to time. And uh, we have uh, a number of people responding to, to that as well. And what I would say is I think that, that because uh, a new policy that is um, ongoing, it's still an ongoing process. So we are looking at how um, we can fine tune it more and also um, make it part of the law as we move forward. So, um, and I can say for a fact that the company the, or the individuals who are already coming uh, somehow are being admitted under the, especially the Ghanaians who have uh, moved abroad are being admitted under the, the dual citizenship or the uh, former nationals um, portion of the act, which we already work with. So maybe we would have to look at the other African regions, which I believe the AFTA is going to take care of as well as our new act in that regard. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as we are coming towards the end of the session, I would like you to explain to the audience what the Ghana Bilateral Investment Promotion Protection Agreement and Double Taxation Agreement is, and uh, perhaps mention some of the countries that Ghana has already gone into the double taxation agreement with and how practically companies or individuals uh, who are residents uh, in either of these countries and doing business in Ghana can practically benefit from those agreements. Okay, I think um, this uh, double taxation agreement is basically agreement between government to government to um, lessen the burden of the instance of tax on their respective citizens. And for that matter, um, if there's that agreement available, then the decision where to file the, uh, your taxes and how to do it is, is um, left to you to, to do. And you look at the uh, agreement, the provisions, and, and take advantage of that. Ghana, I think, has about uh, probably 10, 11, I sign about 10, 11 um, agreements um, with France, Germany, South Africa, um, Mauritius, Malaysia, a number of them. And um, the details of those agreements, I think, can be uh, referred to other. Ghana Revenue Authority website, www.gra.gov.gh, um, which will give you details of those um, countries and also the details of the agreement of, with the respective countries. Thank you. Okay, thank you for sharing. Uh, can you share with us some of the common mistakes that you have seen foreign investors who are trying to invest in Ghana, who, who are currently invested in Ghana, make and some practical guides on how they can avoid those mistakes. Okay. One key, um, or one of the major ones is how you bring in your cash or your investment in general. Uh -huh. What we have seen over time or in the mistake in that area is that um, sometimes companies bring in funds in their personal, through their personal accounts, they go and withdraw their hard currency for whatever interest and whatever businesses that they, are, they want to do. And at the end, they, when they are done, before they come to GIPC to register with their company, and you realize that you are unable to help them in that nice. regard. Yeah. The law requires that companies would have to channel the funds through their, uh, their various um, corporate accounts. And this has to be funds which has been wired from outside the country. And those has to be, that has to be converted into local currency. And that amount would have to be confirmed by your bank, the Bank of Ghana, and Bank of Ghana as well confirms to GIPC before we can recognize it. So as much as possible, we would advise all in, uh, foreigners, but uh, especially to take note of that and ensure that their 
investment go through the specific companies that they are invest in, investing in. Um, they are banking their uh, corporate accounts. Without that, it will be difficult for your bankers to convince recognized. and recognize that, um, that you have made investments into the country. Also, as much as possible, do not make or payments or transfers to third parties in Ghana in foreign currency. Whatever payments you are going to do, as much as possible, pay CD equivalent. Unless, of course, that company is duly certified or registered by um, Bank of Ghana to take on foreign or to price and take payment in foreign currency. When you do that, you may find yourself in trouble where the amount or the amount that you have paid to these companies cannot be retrieved or cannot be used as evidence of your investment. So uh, please let's um, uh, take note of that seriously. The other thing is um, sometimes um, you see uh, foreign investors who say, okay, they have this friend in Ghana and therefore they are sending money to the person and then they want to use to do that. For me, I, would, I, I, I want to say that um, if you're going to send money to Ghana for investment purposes, please do it the right way. Is the money going to be um, loan? Let there be agreement to that effect. So that you have evidence of that. And also that the Ghanaian company or the company registered in Ghana can easily um, pay back those um, uh, funds that you have submitted or brought to the company here in Ghana. If it's equity participation, make sure the right thing is done there's transfer of funds, there's payment for the, what's the name? There's, payment, there's transfer of shares, there's payment for those shares, and that you are able to go through the process to register. The law requires that you make registrations or you register with GIPs before beginning your operations. So I would advise that as much as possible, do that before you begin operations. Otherwise, you can easily incur the wrath of the law. Thank you. Absolutely. I couldn't agree any uh, further. I think also with uh, initial investors or companies who are just coming in is also not consulting the right service providers in getting their company started. There are a lot of uh, foreign nationals who registered companies that are supposed to be foreign owned, and then they only get to find out that they are locally owned companies. So uh, it's important that you engage the right companies or the GIPC in order for you to be well guided to that regard. Okay, at this point, we'll be welcoming questions from the audience, if any. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us, Mr. Timothy. We will check to see if there are any questions from the audience or any contributions that a participant would like to add. Uh, let us know by either raising your hand or just sending the questions in the chat box and we will respond to it accordingly. Um, okay, and also maybe just to add, uh, whilst we wait for those um, questions, that um, the GIBC Act also requires investors which are registered under the Act to um, renew their um, registration registration every two years. Mm -hmm. And in renewing, it's important because if you are not it's only then that we are able to um, tell or say that you are in good standing with, the, investment. with the investment center. Um, because we don't want a case whereby when we need to support you, now we'll be looking at, okay, are you um, good? Are you in good standing with GIPC or not? Because if you are not in good standing with the, with the, the center, we are able to support you with any of the benefits that you, you may um, required from GIPC in terms of the uh, exemptions, in terms of the uh, support for quota and all those stuff. So as much as possible, I want to encourage all um, investors and uh, businesses we, which are registered with the GIPC to um, renew their um, investment once the registration. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. 
so we have a question in the chat box from an expert who currently works in Ghana and has been saving his or her salary in a Ghana bank account. And the person is asking if they can use this money to invest in Ghana or they have to remit it from overseas. Okay. Um, the, the law requires, the law from the, how the law is framed, I think it's to enable, um, it's like you can't um, make returns without any investment. Mm -hmm. So the law requires that the monies are from outside the country into the country. So what the person can possibly do may be to transfer the money out and then um, transfer it back. And since it's money that is due him, I think he's able to transfer it out easily without any challenges. Very well. Uh, and do this through your company's bank accounts. Don't do this through your personal bank account. Remix the money back from- Yeah, the, the person can remit the money bank uh, back um, through his personal account. But when it's coming back, when the it money is being remitted, it should be in the corporate account, the, the exact business that he wants to start or he's starting, it should be through that specific account. Absolutely. All right, while we are waiting on additional questions, I will transfer the host back to my colleague, Mr. Isaac, for any announcement or uh, information. Thank you. Why has the Zoom stopped? My screen has frozen. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, very well. So this is the Invest in Ghana webinar series by Finance Express Limited in partnership with the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. Uh, I am your host, Fadila Ahmed, and uh, we have been chatting with Mr. Timothy Wurlanyo over the past hour and a half, diving deep into discovering the opportunities that exist, the benefit of investing in Ghana, and the compliance requirement. If you have any questions at this time, please drop them in the comment section below or raise your hand so we can bring you live to ask your question directly to myself or to the guests that we have on the call today in order to give you better clarity on what you need to get done to have your investment properly instituted in the country or your business supported by the GIPC. I think somebody has to okay. sign up. Host, kindly unmute the person and uh, let he or she ask the question directly. Okay. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fadila, and thank you, Mr. Timothy, for bringing this program together. I must say it has been an insightful, as we have learned along to discover some of the opportunities that investors can stand to enjoy and also to know the compliance requirements of the GIPC at 865. Now, my question is about the capital requirement. Now, the money that, um, depending on the kind of business ownership that you are, that money that is required from the GIPC, what is it used to do? Does the GIPC keep it or you use it, you, the investor, you use it to run your business whilst in Ghana? I want to understand that part well. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Isaac, for your question. Um, I must say, if GIPC <laughs> is taking custody of this money by this time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be billionaires. Okay, sorry, sorry. So um, the money that you are bringing in is just to satisfy the requirement. 
it is money which is um, for Available. the company and for the yes. company's operations. So we are just, for, from the JIPC point of view, or from the government's point of view generally, it is just to, um, for you to make an investment in order to make a return. Do we get it? Yes. So, so those money just to are add that for your operation and not for uh, the government's um, utilization. No, it's for your operations in general. I hope that this clarifies your question. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for, for sharing that. Uh, it's also important to note that depending on the sector you are investing in, there may be additional government institutions, maybe like the Bank of Ghana, the Mineral Commissions, that will require you to fulfill other requirements. But this is different. This is the initial capital recognition. You bring in the money and you can use the money when the money is already converted to CDs. Uh, for your operations. You can buy equipment, you can run it for your operations. This is just to prove that you have the financial capacity to run the business that you so want to run and be able to create the value that you intend to do in the marketplace. Okay, yeah. if we yeah, have just, any more. Just to yes. touch on that specific, um, the, the regulators. I think various, um, we have a few um, sectors that have regulators in the, um, the investment space, um, we have the stock exchange, we have the Ghana free zones, we have the energy commissions and the like, and that authority. So um, after you have um, incorporated and registered with GIPC, you are required to meet if there is any regulator in your space of operation, you are required to meet those regulations as well. So please, for, for companies that are looking at um, exporting to the outside world, um, you may want to talk to uh, the Free Zones Authority because they are set up to um, for the purposes of export. So companies that have minimum of their products going to be go outside, it will be advisable you set up with the, um, the Ghana Free Zones um, Authority. So um, it is also, good because it has a lot more um, benefits um, to you uh, because you, you are able to enjoy duty tax exemptions on all your inputs as well as on your plant and machinery and sometimes even on your vehicles. So if you are looking at doing production for outside the country and export outside generally, then it is important that you take advantage of that. But the interesting thing is that, um, that those companies that are free zones are considered to be outside the custom area of the country. And therefore, it will also be a bit difficult for you to be able to assess the um, ECOWAS market or maybe thereafter, depending on how things are arranged, um, um, to assess those markets um, by virtue of the ETLS, which is the the ease of um, movement, uh, movement of um, goods and services across um, the ECOWAS region. So yeah. just take note of that, make your calculations properly and know what you want to achieve. And based on that, you can easily um, set up and or structure your company that way. So you can always talk to uh, Freedom's Authority, you can always talk to GIPC and we'll be available to assist you in that regard. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, that is very insightful. Uh, if we have any more questions, please drop them in the section below so we can ask Mr. Timothy directly on the call. This is Finage Express Limited, an international business development and trade facilitation firm that seeks to help you and your business do business across borders more efficiently. Uh, we provide business development and advisory services, trade facilitation and payment advisory, as well as tax accounting and other compliance and value added service. So we will invite you to contact us should you have any questions about uh, what we have discussed today or to reach out directly to the GIPC if you, the questions or what you need to know it's more uh, relevant for them to answer 
you can reach us directly on call 030-224-8782. This is the Invest in Ghana webinar series. And today we are with the GIPC Director for, Deputy Director for Investor Services. Do let us know if you have any additional questions so we can ask uh, and address your concerns. Okay, in the absence of any further questions, Mr. Timothy, I'll invite you to give us your final remarks, uh, word to prospective investors who want to do business in Ghana and how they can reach out to the center. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I want to also say thank you to all your participants and also for yourselves for putting this great uh, event up. Um, Ghana Investment Promotion Center is ever ready to support any investor to uh, implement its projects steadily and then effectively so that um, you avoid any um, challenges with any of the um, government institutions or regulators. So let us work together in achieving that Ghana is open for business and ready to support whichever um, investor that comes in. Um, Ghana Investment Promotion Center can be um, assessed. The, we are located in the Vivo building near the Huawei head office on the Rangu um, lane at the cantonments. However, you can also um, get to us through our website um, at www.gipc.gov.gh. Um, reach us by email info at gipc.gov.gh or investor.services at gipc.gov.gh. We have social media handles, GIPC Ghana, all across the various social medias, which you can also always get us on. And um, do not um, be reluctant to, reluctant to contact us to discuss your business to discuss, your uh, progress to discuss, your changes that you want to make to discuss, any opportunities that you want to take advantage of whilst you are still um, here in Ghana and employment. And even when you're coming, make sure GIPC is the first point of call um, uh, for your investment uh, advisory services. And we are able to link you up with uh, any institution that's of interest to you that you want to uh, engage with to understand better the business environment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Timothy, for spending the past hour and a half with us. Uh, thank you for your insight and information you have shared uh, about investing in Ghana, the regulations, benefits, and opportunities that exist. For those of you on the call, you can contact us directly on the number that I have shared earlier. 030-224-8782 or on 261-816959. You can visit our office, Cherua Memorial House at Kokum Limli or in Nigeria at the Umar Musa Adua Millennium City in Kaduna. And you can e email us at info at financeexpress.com or partnerships at financeexpress.com. And you can contact us or send us any message on our social media using the same name, Thank you so much for being with us today, uh, Mr. Isaac. Let me know if you have any additional information you'd like to share with our audience so I can transfer the host back to you. Mr. Timothy and the team at GIPC, thank you for hosting this session together with us and honoring our invitation. We look forward to continue to work with you in providing the relevant information and support to our clients and prospective investors who want to do business in Ghana. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here and have a great rest of the day. Bye for now. Thank you.